reminders um, that will fire off. Now, in addition to reminders, uh, this is something that's going to fall in more of a, a multi-user environment. Um, but uh, you'd also receive delegations and delegation updates. Now, here's an example of, of a reminder. Uh, so this is a reminder that I would have set for an appointment. Uh, so this will remind me of a, a feature request proposal. I have a dentist appointment at Hillcrest Mall. And, and I have a lunch meeting at, uh, at the Spices. So these are the reminders that are firing off. Now, uh, this will pop open. You can also get your, your uh, doc, uh, the, the icon in the dock to bounce. Uh, so you have a few ways of kind of grabbing your attention. Um, but you can also set up other reminders like email reminders. You can get the computer to speak to you. So there's a few options there. Um, but those other uh, notifications that will pop up would be a delegation update. So in this case, this task was delegated to the daylight admin. And the daylight admin made the following changes. So this will actually keep me uh, updated on stuff that I delegate. And of course, I'd also receive delegations through the notification window as well. Now, I want to make sure that we have some time for questions and answers as well. Uh, but just to quickly touch base on, on projects and opportunities. So an opportunity is, is really a chance to gain revenue. Uh, so these are things that fall a little bit outside of our control, but we can still manage them to the very best of our ability because we don't want this stuff to fall through the cracks. Um, whether that's sending someone information, whether it's following up, um, there, there's many different uh, scenarios there, but it's still important to be able to track this stuff. Now the second portion of that is projects, and this is really helping you deliver on your on your promises, whether these are external promises or internal promises, maybe improving your mail server, your business cards, what have you. It's still important to be able to track all the stuff that you want to do because that's how you're going to ensure that your business moves forward. And that's really the biggest gain that, that you can uh, get from daylight. Uh, but I, I don't want to kind of go too deep into that stuff because uh, I don't want to drown out with too much information. Um, as, as I really want to focus on, on more of that day-to-day -day stuff right now and, and kind of get you into to using the program. Uh, as Once you kind of get that stuff under your belt, picking up the more advanced stuff becomes much easier. Now, uh, I did want to just quickly touch base on, on synchronization uh, once again, because I, I know this is a, a, common, um, a common request. Now, within the preferences, this is where you'd actually be setting up the synchronization settings. Um, so right now, I, I have it off. Um, I, I, but when you turn this on, this is where you can actually set up um, what you're going to be syncing. Now, to expand on this, you can also get the step-by-step -step stuff right from within the help system in daylight. Um, so if I was just to type in synchronization, uh, I can find out about synchronization. Uh, I can find out about task and appointment synchronization. And of course, about syncing contacts and organizations uh, and, and, and how that works. Now, uh, the best thing really is, is kind of going through this information because it's really important to understand. However, um, if you do have any questions or anything like that, just let me know. Bounce it off me. I'd be more than happy to expand on it for you. And that way, we can ensure that uh, uh, you have a strong understanding of it. Now, I will open it up for questions and answers. Um, so I, I will do it uh, alphabetically. Um, so Alan, I'm going to uh, unmute your mic. Uh, if you had any questions or anything like that, you are on the air to share. Um, I wanted to know, can you see, uh, I saw the project stuff, you can see progress. Uh, can you see progress across multiple projects? In other words, so, like one view of how your projects are all doing? Yeah, this is something that, so if you, as an example, were to, to, to select those projects, here, let me select a few more for you. This is something you'd be able to see uh, from within the layout. So all I did, uh, I used a shortcut Command P, uh, but it's just going into the print menu. Uh, and when you're within the print menu, there's actually one that, that really stands out for me. Um, now, if you want to kind of get an idea of a, still a per project snapshot, you can take a look at, at this layout. Um, but there's some additional ones that you can take a look at as well. Um, so if you wanted to see, well, where, oopsies, I, my apologies, I'm on a, on a beta there. Um, let me uh, kill this. Uh, there's other layouts as well that would display this information for you. Now, in addition, if there was something that you were looking for, uh, maybe something a little bit more specific, um, maybe you and I can chat a little bit after, uh, and then we can kind of understand what your specific needs are, and that way there might be another way of showing it, uh, or you might want to simply customize the layout to get all the, all the different information you're looking for. It also right. depends on, on where you're storing it. Uh, so those are those are two important aspects to kind of understand. Can you get back to it? Are you just going to show me that? Something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's see if you can. So as an example, when you're when you're selecting, uh, let's let's do this. 
so when you're selecting some projects, um, there's a, a project summary, so this is going to give you uh, all the details, all the different appointments right. going on, all the tasks. That's for um, one you, specific project, right? Yes. Oh, multiple and then, projects. Right. Um, it, it, I think it's just as simple as uh, um, as modifying that layout to to include the information you're looking for. Well, no, you had that nice view, that one, right? And I was just wondering if you can see them all one after yeah. the other. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, um, yeah, it just be as simple as selecting those and then um, going to that project uh, uh, pipelines. So you gotcha. can actually see yeah, everything good. going on. Okay, that was my first question. Second, in the calendar view, I didn't notice any times, like when you're looking at your calendar. Is that just the way it was? Oh, there it is. I guess it is. I guess I, it was I think, in the month it wasn't. Yeah, it was probably in the month view. Uh, the there's month. a few. Yeah, there's a few other options you can set up that I don't have set up there. Uh, I'm right. just going to use a shortcut to jump to my preferences. Uh, for anyone that's curious, it's command comma. Uh, but under general, um, you can actually show the time and a busy bar. And you'll notice when you look at the calendar now, it's giving you uh, the times of the appointment in the title. Got it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the, uh, the busy bar at the side. And then one last question is like, what happens when you delete, like, can you, can you delete anything? First of all, if you delete a contact, you lose all the the history and everything around it and so forth. No, so as an example, um, because daylight establishes links, when I delete this contact, uh, right. I, I can move this contact to the trash. Right. Um, these are still objects in the database. Right. It's just this contact that is na is now in the trash. Now, if something is deleted, this is also important to show because not a lot of users know this, uh, daylight actually has a built-in trash. So if you did delete something by mistake, uh, right. You can restore it. So wait a minute, you did not delete an anoroxy there, right? No, no, no. She's right there. If I was to actually move to trash, okay, uh, so when she I go would be to, gone, right? yeah, now yeah. she'd be in there. And of so course, like any any connection, like I I delete anoroxy. If someone if I had a link between anoroxy and Kevin, for example, if I looked at Kevin and I deleted Anna, she would not appear then. Anything, in other words, once you delete Anna, all the all the relationships disappear as well. I was uh, not there. They, so yeah, exactly. Until she's brought back. So as as you can see, right. when I brought her back, because she was still in my trash, right? That stuff came back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it for me right now. Perfect. Not a problem. Well, if there's Thanks. anything else, like I like I mentioned, I'd be more than happy to uh, to go over. It. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it a little bit. Perfect. Alrighty. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks again for attending, and I will. Uh, I'll move on to to Ashley. Now, just to to clarify, Amin is uh, my colleague. He's just recording the webinar for me, so I'm I'm not ignoring him. Uh, but uh, but Ashley, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. You are on the air. Not a problem. Uh, thank you, Ashley, for the the chat. Um, if there, of course, there is anything else, just uh, just let us know. All right, John, we'll move on to you. Did you have any uh, questions or anything I could go over for you? Just a, a basic one: if you, to even add a new contact, and then, uh, or if there's a company new hire, just to add that uh, new hire without having to reload all the information, uh, exact group. Yeah, is it is it for uh, an existing company? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. So in this case, uh, say a new contact was for Jelly Beans Rocks. Um, by selecting the the organization ahead of time, it'll actually pull uh, the organization in for you. And, and you'll notice that I have the phone numbers come in. So there is some, uh, there are some shortcuts that you can, you can kind of do when you're doing that. You're just going to grab the organization phone numbers or, or grab the organization details. That way you can just enter the, the new name mm -hmm. and then um, move on to what you got to do. Now, the other thing you can take advantage of, of, of course, is this next field. Uh, so if you wanted to create a link task for this person, uh, maybe an appointment, maybe a project, uh, maybe you want to link an additional contact. Maybe you just want to add another contact. Um, you can kind of set that up so you can go through it. Okay. The category and all that is, is up to a default? It's yeah, you can set up a default. Yeah, you'd be able to set up a default for that or just simply uh, set it as it comes up. Okay. All right. And then for like an email, is there a way to mm -hmm. have the, you know, most companies have the same postfix after the at symbol. Is there a way to... Have that come up automatically, or just have to type that in? Yeah, that would you just have to uh, to type okay. in. The one thing you could do, though, um, yeah, sorry, yeah, you would have to uh, to type that in. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, that, I'm good. Perfect. All right, John. If there is anything else, uh, please let us know. 
All right, Matt, you are on the air. Oh, is is it my turn, Matt, for Matt? Yes, it yes it is. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I've been I've been taking notes. Uh, I've just got a couple questions. Yeah, sure. Um, and it it's the the first one is is there a Gantt chart anywhere? Uh, there is not a Gantt chart. However, one of the things you can look at, um, one of the programs that Daylight integrates with is Merlin. Uh, I'm not too sure if you're familiar with Merlin, um, yeah, but I, I know. Okay, I know that the I know that it does have it. And the other thing that I could recommend, uh, if you wanted to keep all this stuff within Daylight, uh, would be to potentially look at having a customized report. Now, what it would do is it's really going to pull that information for you, so it's more of presenting it in that Gantt chart format. Um, but there wouldn't be any built-in uh, functionality right now for that. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, I have a user that uses Daylight before. So it's almost like generating a custom report, and if we put a date to each uh, phase in the pipeline, then that might be able to generate something that resembles a Gantt chart. Yeah. What I would recommend doing, and this is where our partners can really take Daylight to the next level for you, um, even if you just open up a, a dialogue with them saying, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, do you have any recommendations? Because then they can ask you the, the necessary information. Okay, well, what are you tracking? How are you tracking it? Things like that. And then they'll have a much better idea in terms of, of how they can present that information for you. Okay. And then my, my next question is about uh, backups of the database. Let, let's say we're using yep, yep. The, um, uh, the Daylight server, not, not the okay. personal edition. Is, is there is the backup automatic and what's the frequency on it? That's uh, that's what you set. So within the daylight server admin, uh, when you're in that Beautiful. backup tab, uh, you can set okay. the date, the time, and of course what uh, databases you're backing up. And, and lastly, is only, only because I asked this because we were a frequent uh, SoundMaker Pro uh, uh, user at a previous agency, and this did happen every once in a while. So I'd just like to know what happens if there is, if there's data corruption. Um, and, and let's say we're doing a backup uh, once every hour. Um, mm -hmm. is, is there some sort of like a recovery tool, or do you have to rely on going to the latest whatever last backup you had? At that point, it, it's, I would actually have to put you in contact with our technical support team. Depending on the, the state of the database, they'd be able to make that uh, recommendation. It, it, okay, it's really, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's really more of a, a per case scenario. Uh, if there's something that they can salvage, absolutely, um, they always try to. It just really depends on the state. Um, but of course, by but ensuring having an active backup, um, you know, worst case scenario, you're not going to be too far out. Gotcha. And, and then with, with projects, are we able to track? Um, and I, I might be getting too advanced with this right now because mm -hmm. um, I know there's the billings product. Is there a way to track? Costs associated with the project. So I know we're tracking time, um, but is there a way, like you know, if, if we have a uh, if we have a web development company that we hired for you know ten thousand um, dollars, that we're able to track that ten thousand dollar cost against that project? Uh, well, if you know what the cost is ahead of time, like if you just have the, the value amount, one thing you could do is is by linking a task to that project. Um, you might want to set up a category for this stuff if you're going to track it within daylight. Uh, some of this is ifs and buts, but uh, with that being said, uh, you can classify the task to represent an expense. Uh, if that task is linked to the project, then you know this is an expense for that project, and the details would be able to set the amount. Um, and then from there, if you're going to be invoicing for things and things like that, if you tie it into billings, when you import a project, it will bring over any task or appointments as slips. So then you can take those slips um, and then invoice for it. Okay, and then my last question, uh, I actually, I have someone else that has one question here. Mm -hmm. Hi, I've been sitting on my call with Matt, and I am actually have a Daylight server and a mm -hmm. Daylight user and a Daylight touch um, license. Yep. And I'm going to be working with these guys, and they're going to be 